How many kinds where do we start? Yeah, we like them dumb and we like them smart. I like the ones with the pretty eyes. Well, I like all kinds of guys. Stop. What happened? How about the ones we especially like? Which ones? You know, the ones with the cars that go... I hear you. Oh. Hit it! It's the Going <laughs> Off Podcast! Ladies and gentlemen, we're talking about Latrim. Um, because mm. I was just reminded about this goddamn song and their, I'm just gonna say, exquisite uh, Jersey accents. Um... <laughs> The fucking, we like them short and we like them tall. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I saw someone share the song on Twitter, and I haven't heard the song in, no exaggeration, like, probably 20 years. I mean, wh and where would you hear it? I I I'll tell you where I heard it, oh. which is the weirdest thing. I, I want to get back into scripted videos, if only to do a series on the history of compilation cds oh <laughs> uh, like the now and the fucking the know, nows and it, all the all, all the, those ads that used to see in cartoon network and shit oh my god <laughs> dude because i'm obsessed with them but right. uh, do you remember the transitions where like they played them so fucking much i was able to i'm like i didn't oh, know yeah. the individual songs but i knew the transitions in between them you know what i mean I, I think I think we talked about this exact yeah, this exact the thing love. before. <laughs> Be yeah, <laughs> infamous. Whoever did that, they needed a fucking. They needed some recognition. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> um, but the reason I bring this up is because when I was a wee lad and I was not very knowledgeable about rap music, mm. your boy uh, saw a commercial for a two disc compilation titled. Monsters of Rap. Oh. You want it. You other brother can't deny. You beg for it. And now you're gonna get it. It's Monsters of Rap, the biggest hip-hop hits on two CDs and two cassettes. Monsters of Rap, no one talks about that. Monsters of Rock? Everyone remembers those commercials. Mm, the the yep. fucking guy jumping out of the airplane with the fucking yep. parachute. It's Monsters of Rock! Monsters of Rock. 35 huge hits on two CDs and two cassettes. Featuring Warren. And then they fucking got the other one, the uh, Monster Ballads, where it's like him yeah, and a woman. Yeah, that's the and one I used to see the most, yeah. They're a bride and groom. They taught us how to love. I give them something to believe in. They taught us how to live. Monster Ballads, 35 powerful hits on two CDs and two cassettes. It's awesome! White Snake. Every rose, rose and is and is <laughs> She's only 17! 17! <laughs> yeah, and the like. Uh, Monsters are rap, things though. Things of that nature. <laughs> <laughs> things of that ilk. Um, but see, the thing about Latrim, right, is that they are... I guess, considered, if the name of this compilation oh, oh. <laughs> is to be taken literally, M monster. the Monsters of Rap. Yes. Mm. So, what I wanted to bring to the table today is, uh, I just wanted to share with you the songs that made it on Monsters of monsters Rap. Monsters of Rap. These are the monsters. The, These the are Latrim, the voices. Yeah, fucking Latrim is making it, you know. Admittedly, we start out pretty strong, okay? Oh, okay? We got we got Run DMC, Walk This Way. Well, what year is this again? This came out in 99. Uh, all right, all right, all right. Uh, so then we got Young MC, Bust a Move. Okay, gotta have that one, gotta have mm -hmm. that one. MC Hammer, Can't Touch This. I mean, I mean yeah, yeah. Th there's no denying that. It's gotta be there. Sir Mix-a-Lot, Baby Got Back. Once again. Uh, snap, The Power. <laughs> all right, all right. <laughs> which, which version? <laughs> <laughs> then we got Positive K. I got a man. Hmm. All right. You're starting to. Okay. <laughs> that was not even what? on Spotify. Like the. <laughs> Are you telling me you don't remember? Uh, fucking. I got a man. Do, What's you ever, your man got to do with me? 
You ever like go your whole I life gotta, man. enjoying a genre and then someone tells you, you don't know about that song? That was a big hit. It was a classic. And you're like, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> It had a big impact on me and no one else. <laughs> okay, well, here we go. We're, 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 getting, we're, we're uh, getting our footing again. We got DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. Parents just don't understand. Okay, okay. Right? Okay, that's got to be there. Rex and Effect, Rump Shaker. You can yeah. already see what era uh, these yeah. are from. Yeah, I'm like, what year is this again? 1999 when this came out, eh? Yeah. What what, 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 uh, what songs were e- easy to buy at that time? <laughs> yeah, you've got almost a decade of of this of this relatively new genre to uh to comb through, and these are the ones that uh that rise to the top, the cream that rises to the top. The Folks monster. like. No stranger to the going off podcast. Arrested Development, Tennessee. Hey, look at that. Hey, uh, tech, uh, technotronic. Get up before the night is over. <laughs> uh, what? Uh, what? <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not a rap group. That's a fucking house or some shit. The lines they get a little blurry uh, <laughs> here. Me- How about Mellow Man Ace? Mentirosa. I, yeah. Mentirosa. You know, I had, yeah, because okay. that was the one. That's like, oh, you're you're a liar. You know, it's a, it's a song about shaming women for a you know as you did back then. If you're worried about the misogyny, if it missed you with the left, it's gonna hit you with the right. Mm. And the name of that right is JJ Fad with Supersonic. Okay. Okay. Uh, Candyman knocking boots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's the one that makes me laugh. <laughs> the monster of rap, Candyman. <laughs> I want to throw a little Father MC in there too. <laughs> uh, see, uh, <laughs> so there's a good bit of these. Uh, I- I'm gonna, I'm gonna guess here. Kuiper. K Y P R. Tic Tac Toe. Tic Tac Toe. The only reason I know about that song is because Todd the Shadows did a, like, video on, like, the worst of 1991. Oh, that was in there! <laughs> and I was oh. just like, does this even, does this count as rap? <laughs> How about Snow with Informer? Ooh, ooh. Oh, well, well, there's a girl's, uh, La Trim. Uh, mm. Cars That Go, Boom. They love the boom. There is no denying how much they love the boom. Uh... Oran Juice Jones with the rain. Literally nothing is coming. To okay, the end how about <laughs> how Orange about Juice. does this name ring a bell? Tone Loke with wild thing. Okay, all right. Yeah, the 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 uh, <laughs> which which version was it? Is it the first uh, uh, version of that song or the second version of that exact same song? Which oh was, yeah, well see, was, wild thing, da, da, and then funky comedita. It's like, come on, man. I th- I think wild thing might be the more well known of the two. Maybe I think funky Cole Medina was first though, because oh. that one sounds like the one that w- th- where he didn't quite get the formula yet. You know what I mean? Well, see again, this might sound familiar because they did it again. How about? Rob Bass and DJ Easy Rock with, oh, with their big hit Joy and Pain. Oh, Joy <laughs> and Pain <laughs> and Sunshine Could, and Rain. So could pump they not? Up, pump it up. They, they couldn't get it. Takes two. That that didn't qualify for no. the uh, Monsters of Rats compilation. No, oh. get that get that <laughs> of all the songs out of, of here. All, of all the songs that specifically these two made. <laughs> <laughs> that one didn't meet the qualification. You see, you see how things were before uh, guys like uh, you know uh, Muse and Rap Critic came along to, to, to oh, you know what I mean to let the people know what's up. <laughs> it's a sad time, and we're just here to give you a glimpse into the uh, into the before times and the long, long time ago. Um, I think I might have mentioned it to you that there was some show recently in Charlotte. I think it was like. I think it was in celebration of the anniversary of the Hornets being a team. <laughs> Not winning and, anything, just just starting to exist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and it was like a 90s themed, like, oh, we're going to be wearing the fucking throwback shit. I remember, and, you know, good times. And on the radio ad, they actually said, uh, and in attendance for the, for the halftime show, Ooh. Rob Bass. And DJ Easy Rock will perform. What a gift. It takes two. 
and will perform their one song. <laughs> yeah, that's your halftime show. One song, and they're out. You couldn't even get him to play Joy and Pain as featured on Monsters of Rock. Come mm. on, man. That's what they're paying for. How about Heavy D with Now That We Found Love? Okay. Okay. That's that's a bit of a bop. You know. Mm-hmm. We're in the home stretch here now, fellas. Vanilla Ice. Ice Ice Baby. <laughs> oh, you don't want to put a, you don't want to put stop that train on there? You, you don't want to put uh play that funky music, white boy? Oh uh, you yeah. don't want those gyms? <laughs> mm. How about um uh, hmm. Ninja rap? <laughs> <laughs> go, Ninja! Go, that, Ninja! Go, that... <laughs> go! 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 Oh my god, I'm forgetting. He wasn't even in the first movie. It was the second one. <laughs> oh, well, well, that's when the that, that's when the Ninja Turtles had the clout that they oh, could yeah. finally afford mm. Vanilla Ice. Because mm. before about... it was a, your boy, it's Turtle Power. T-U-R-T-L-E Power. What, what was uh, it? The... Partners in Rhyme. <laughs> oh, that's the fucking. It's like the name brand. That's what they had. That's back in the day when they had those names, like you know, Doctor Rappenstein, shit like that. <laughs> that was fucking great value store brand, sh- uh, store brand shit. But then they could finally afford the nice shit mm. with fucking Vanilla Ice. By the way, Vanilla Ice and Snow. I remember more for the Jim Carrey parodies on In Living Color oh than God, their that's, own fucking careers. That's kind of a good point. <laughs> yeah. No, okay. I'm not gonna lie though. My mom had Snow's uh, first album. Ooh, in so full. I, I actually knew a couple. Of, wow. Oh yeah, uh, the, the album entitled uh, 12 Inches of Snow." If you oh. get my drip, ladies. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> that you know what? That's the best name he could have possibly came up with. Whoever came up with that, holy shit. They yeah. fucking put him in the Grammy Hall of Fame. Um, in the shoulda won a Grammy category. For, for best album name? Oh, yeah. Retroactively, we need a Hall of Fame, and they're gonna be the they're gonna be fucking first round draft pick. Dude, it would be great if they did started doing that. Best album name, best album covers. Oh, my God. Dude, <laughs> worst, seriously? Worst album covers. <laughs> oh, we, a fucking Razzies for music. Oh, exactly. God. Uh, look, you gotta give something to, what was it, Limp Biscuits album, uh, Hot dog flavored water and the starfish butthole or some stupid shit. Uh, excuse me, that's a uh, chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored water. <laughs> Your boy had that on CD back in the day <laughs> I love when he <laughs> when he thought he was a fucking edgy twelve year old. Mm, he's got. If I say fucks two more times, that will have meant I would have said fuck a lot of times in this song. Dude, oh my god. The fucking edginess for the sake of fucking edginess. Jesus yeah! Oh, like, imagine, imagine being an old man and knowing that <laughs> one of your albums as a child was entitled <laughs> fucking Chocolate Starving. You gotta tell your kids that. Don't tell the kids. <laughs> they Dude, can't what, know. You ever think, like, some people just, like, they don't tell their kids that they were famous, just hope they don't find out. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Just hope the irrelevance will wash over, you know? <laughs> you know You know what's even sadder than that? There, there's a high school locally where uh, Fred Durst attended high school, mm. but like only for the first year. Ah, and, they, and basically uh, they're going like, oh, he was here, right? One of those fucking deals. Uh-huh, yeah, they're like, hey, fucking alum. Like, well, you can't say that <laughs> because he didn't graduate from here. He He moved to Jacksonville. Yes. And, you know, finished high school there. But, hey, he was a fucking freshman here. He, Put he his name in the trophy case. He one time. <laughs> you know, I, I honestly, I don't know if I'm making this up or if I heard this. I think in their trophy case, they have, oh, the deuce chills. They have the fucking, like, red baseball cap uh, uh, in the trophy uh, case. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but I fucking drifted too far away. How about third base? Pop goes the weasel, goes the weasel, goes pop. I, I mean, you know, that was kind of their uh, their big hit specifically because it was dissing Vanilla Ice, you know. Fuck Vanilla Ice, and it comes right after the Vanilla Ice song. They knew what they were doing. <laughs> Did they do that on purpose? <laughs> Uh, kid and play ain't gonna hurt nobody. Hey, no, that's right? a bot. That's a bot. That's a bot. Mm-hmm. That, that's also not on Spotify. <laughs> oh, wow! Holy shit! How You're... about slam? Oh, that's like the Let first the boys and boys. high profile. Like in 1999, slam totally still would have been playing in the club. Like, oh fuck yeah! <laughs> you know what I mean? Mm. And we're and slam what, is evergreen. 
what better way to follow the intensity of Onyx and Slam than with the Fat Boys and Wipeout? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Fuck it! <laughs> look, <laughs> look, I know there's, parks, there, there seems to be, there's a special place in specifically Nas and Jay-Z's heart for oh, the yeah. fat boy, because they like mention them every now and then, <laughs> but I, I just don't see it, man. Like, like I know they're cool and everything, you know. They, they, they were there. You know what I'm saying? They were, they were there to give a, a you know, hip hop a little bit of diversity. You know. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But it's kind of like they're literally just stereotypes of fat people. <laughs> like as um, soon as you break it down, you know what I mean? Oh, and, and, oh, 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 but uh, how could I be smirched to them after they made uh, the, the classic hip hop film uh, Disorderlies? I, excuse me. <laughs> if we're talking about stereotypes, how about? Uh, if, how, how, how am I supposed to pronounce that? I forget. Gerardo or Gerardo with Rico. Oh, Suave. oh, is that on there? Rico. Is, is, is that part of the Suave? Did, did, did they put that after Mentiroso? It's like here's the Latin portion of here is 100 percent of the Latin rap that was in the mainstream. Uh, they had <laughs> from, to have from one... 1989 to 1997. They had to have one on each disc to fucking <laughs> to even it out. But how about this for some fucking validity? A Tribe Called Quest with Scenario. Ooh! Ooh! Ooh. Scenario, too! See, they, they, mm-hmm. the woman bust the fucking rhyme. Ooh, okay. You know what they did? They were like, shit, we can't get an actual Buster Rhyme song. But we can get this one that he was featured on that, that we don't have to pay as much for, so, you know. And, and I know <laughs> what you're thinking. A Tribe Called Quest? Scenario? I would categorize that under... Things that make me go, hmm. Oh my god. By CNC, C&C and Music C&C Factory. Fucking music Factory. Things Again. that make me go, hmm. Again. Like, I don't even think people at the time <laughs> really, really considered them no. in hip hop per se. <laughs> <laughs> they they were struggling, dude, because then you got Father MC, I'll do for oh, you. Oh, they actually did it! <laughs> I'll do number four letter U. Mm. Uh, oh, he's on his print shit. How about Black Sheep? The choice is yours. You know, I know people like that song. Mm. But for me, it's not that mm. I hate it. I just I just always hated that like sample in the background. It it just it was just like slightly too loud for me to be able to hear <laughs> the rappers. So it's just like yeah. here's your butt, here's your butt, here's your butt. come on, come on. Like, what did what what he say? <laughs> Uh, we're in the home stretch. We've got four more songs. We got two in a room with Wiggle It. Oh, yeah. Uh, wiggle It just a little bit. Little bit. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. The songs that just sound like they're just like sleazy and like grabbing their dicks <laughs> while they're saying it. Yeah, uh. Wiggle It. <laughs> just a little bit. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> How about just mentioned on last week's episode? PM Dawn set adrift on Memory Bliss. Okay. Another one that's not on Spotify for some fucking reason. Oh <laughs> my god. Dude, that was actually a fucking shame, because that's a that's a really good fucking song. <laughs> Dude, everyone, go online, spend way too much for this out of print CD. Uh, because apparently these are the only places you're gonna hear most of these songs these days. Dude, if they're just not on Spotify, what the fuck? Music's slowly disappearing, man. Ha- when was the last time you heard a De La Soul song? Uh, like, really well, think about that. Uh, well, I think that's because they, they got shit with the record label. Exactly. Uh, mm. a, a, a couple of their first albums, specifically because uh, the record label didn't give a shit about trying to clear the samples officially. So they're just uh, like, I guess we're just not going to fucking upload. <laughs> and like, oh, literally, it's not, literally, it's not worth the label's time for them. Yeah. And it's yeah, just like, I God mean, damn, mm. y'all. <laughs> so, you know, listen to it while you fucking can, because, I mean, we may think the internet is forever, but you, know, you don't know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pretty soon, uh, the only way you'll be able to hear it is on those fucking uh, hip hop documentaries about the eighties. <laughs> oh shit! You got you got to fucking record it off <laughs> off VH1. Uh, finally, uh, our last two songs here, possibly the oldest song on the compilation. Dude, the Sugar Hill Gang is on that fucking. No, instead, try Curtis Blow with the breaks. <laughs> what? <laughs> These oh, are on. the breaks! It's fucking 1982, it's 
1999. Who the fuck, fuck would be listening yeah. to that? <laughs> what young That's upstarts the are listening the to this? <laughs> I mean, and uh, and of course we got to round it up with the far side and Yamama. What? 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 <laughs> <laughs> well, I was about to give him credit for a second. I was like, oh, far side. Oh, of course he keeps up. Ba- oh, now that one. Oh, of course drop. Oh, of course it- your fucking mama. Is that even a goddamn single? <laughs> <laughs> Razor and Ty uh, does not put, disappoint. They want to put fucking the rapping Duke on there as well. Other ass- da ha da ha. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but yeah, folks. Uh, y- your boy had that CD as a kid. So you know, order now. Order by credit card and save COD charges. Rush delivery available. Let's do it. We got to talk about uh your. A uh, Patreon ah, my request. Patron. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, let's scroll down. Um, yeah. Uh, a, a big thanks to Seamus uh, Yesarian, a serpent perplexed. I hope I'm getting your name right. Whoa. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> name is dope as fuck, dude. Exactly. It sounds like the uh, it sounds like a, a storyteller or some shit. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, a wise sage. <laughs> um, for requesting 3.0 by Big Data. Big. <laughs> motherfucking data look mm. i you know me muse right i i'd like to think so sure i'm a sucker for for, for a concept album oh you know. yeah um was this one of those i i would ar- i would actually argue i would actually argue because okay. like as I, as I was listening to it i think eh. i think they were being a little slick mm. i think they was doing some slick shit uh, hmm. so, so, the, the point of this album is that it's like, uh, you know, um, um, it, it, the album is about, you know, people's relationships to technology, and how, you know, the relationship is like, uh, you hear some of these lyrics that are, uh, w- what's the song, Slay? Or it's mm. like, um, well, eh, that one doesn't really make it clear, but, uh, no. Evolution Once Again, where it's Evolution mm. Once Again, I don't start to be my friend, and it's like, all right, see, I'm hearing down your voice. I'm hearing down your voice. I thought I thought we was gonna have. I thought we was gonna ha- come to an agreement with what was going on this album, but I feel like we're gonna have a little a, a little conflict because. And not, but uh, let me make my case. Let me make my case. Okay. Uh huh. Uh-huh, I'm, yeah. I'm listening to this album. Didn't know anything about it. I just started listening. And I saw the album cover, and it was like the picture of you know what looks like a um, what are those fucking things called? Uh, I'd never put them in my fucking house. Uh, Siri. Oh uh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah I, I, which basically looks like a fucking uh, kid Hal nine thousand. <laughs> I, I was thinking almost like uh, like one of those uh, Beats pills, mm. but almost yeah, like a fucking. But you smart... know, it's got an eye, you know. Yeah, it's a fucking smart home device. Yeah. big data. I get it. They're exactly. like surveillance. Yeah, and the uh, whole I get it. You know, that, the, the point of the album is like you know. It's showing you from the perspective of the computer, like, its relationship with a human being. Or is it a relationship with a computer and a human being? Could it possibly be between two people? Could it possibly be the person's perspective talking to the technology? I'm just, I, I thought it was clever. I thought the shit was clever. I wow. thought the shit was kind of clever. Ooh, you read and, way more into it than I did. Holy shit. Well, and it was actually one of those things where it was like, the more I started to listen to it, the more I was like, oh, this is kind of cool. I can fuck with this. And I was like, I specifically didn't want to look up anything about the album because I didn't want to break the the Daft Punkian illusion of, like, oh. this being, like, you know. Because cause think about it, right? All right, you have Daft Punk. They do the really robot voices. But that's uh-huh, not yeah. how today would do it, right? They would do a, you right, know, yeah. a nice sounding voice. You know, a voice that sounds like, uh, what, what did I r- write down specifically? Um... Oh yeah, specifically, uh, you know, uh, it, it's kind of dark how uh, happy some of the lyrics kind of are with the, with the little synths and effects adding to the idea of this robot lulling us into safety before it totally kills the shit out of us. Mm, uh, okay. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, uh, I, I wrote specifically, I said, it sounds like um, if Maroon 5 made an album based around the She Blinded Me With Science song by Thomas Dolby <laughs> and also Adam Levine's voice didn't sound like Squidward's clarinet. Uh, that's what I had written down. Because, you know, he's got a nice voice. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't yeah. run on that. He's, he, like, legit, I, I was listening to this and thinking, you know, if Justin Bieber or, like, a Shawn Mendes or an Ed Sheeran made this album, I would be mm. like, holy shit. 
pop music's doing something fun, doing something interesting. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but but the fact that it's like you know, like it, it's. I mean, I don't know who did it. I mean, maybe it is fucking John Mendes for all I fucking. <laughs> but it, that that would be like a, a your old Drew sort of thing. You, know, you remember that uh, phenomenon? And it's oh, like it's about okay. love, but it's actually about like how technology. You know, we're over relying. You know, it's it's Black mm. Mirror, the album. You know what I mean? I thought. Oh. Look, as a guy who's into sci-fi, I thought it was oh, pretty yeah. fucking fresh. I thought it was pretty fresh. But I am hearing. Uh, 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 vocal vocalizations of of uh, uh, displeasure from you. So, so uh, I'm, I'm gonna ask you what you think. <laughs> oh God, I I didn't like it at all. Man, you weren't rocking it with it at all. No, dude. Um, I thought the beats were okay on some of these. Like you, you they were right, right. They're not explosive. They're not. You know, it's no, see, I, 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 like... I do want to make it clear. It's not Daft Punk. It it is not. On that level of uh, musical ingenuity, this is uh, electro pop by a white dude from Brooklyn. If that needs, if that tells you anything, man, you ruined the whole illusion, man. No, I can't. <laughs> it's, it's 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 very base level with with the electro pop. This is just like to me, just flavorless, too tepid toned for you. down, way too tepid, no spice. Um. Apparently, they're best known for a single called uh, Dangerous, which came out a little while ago. I went and listened to it, and after listening to that song, um, I could definitely tell that they tried to recreate that sound multiple times on the album. See, I, I had trying heard that. Trying to go back to that well. Yeah, I saw something about that. Yeah, yeah. I didn't think they, they pulled that off. Um, my, my biggest complaints... Dude's voice is so goddamn dull, I couldn't stand it. The concept was interesting enough to sustain wh- what they were doing with the, uh... Ugh. Like, like, cause... The, the way lyrics they, were so, like, water, like, dude. I liked how they described it in a way that, to me, could be interpreted oh. in these possible ways. Like, um... Okay, so the first chorus is the Follow me, cause I, I know you wanna play. Follow me, don't you know I came to slay. Now, when you first hear that lyric, you know, there's that bit of like, came to slay is okay. Or then, you know, there, there's not a lot, there's not a lot of spice to it, right? You know, but then. Not from this voice, no. But then when you think about the fact that it's a robot who's here to kill everyone, <laughs> you're like, oh. <laughs> it's like, yeah, don't you know I'm here to kill all of you? <laughs> See, um, if, if I knew that going <clears throat> in, I might have had a better experience with this, but mm. I was just judging the lyrics on a listening to them reading them basis and i didn't really get that from it on its own Mm. see i i think it was because the writing was specifically trying to make it like they didn't want to do like a deltron 30 30 thing where it's like (laughs) we're telling you the expansive universe of the this is supposed to be a sort of uh uh what's the word uh yeah i think they just use it described like liar liar movies like that where it's like uh fantastic realism you know it's like we're technically just telling you about like the real world and you could interpret this as as a relationship Mm. but if you think about it you know what i mean that type of shit Yeah, i can see that um i I also liked that there was one point where there was like a motif that they used in like track three on see-through and then it comes Mm. back later on like track nine or ten you know and and, and you hear it more pronounced and it's like a sort of like oh like that's kind of cool that they're doing it and then uh the second time it comes in uh, every now and then it hits like a little sour note, which is just kind of like, ooh, like, you know, there's something darker going on this time in, in, the, uh, yeah. in the narrative as well. But y- you're right. It's not like there's a through line. There's not a direct narrative or anything like that. It's just vignettes of ideas. Uh, I feel culminating in the song uh, Monster. I thought that was my fucking favorite one. That was a fun. You, you weren't even bopping to that one. You, no. you weren't tapping your toe. No. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. It, not even unglued. You weren't feeling that one. No, um, the one where he absolutely says, absolutely not. The one where he says, uh, "My head is unscrewed. What do I need it for? My eyes are out of view. Can't see them anymore." Uh, you know, uh, uh, what he said, uh, "Must be going out of my mind. Headed for a new space." I thought that was kind of cool in the sense of like, oh, this could be talking about a relationship, or it could be talking about someone taking apart the technology and like building it. You know what I mean? That's what I thought. We had, we had very different experiences because you had that knowledge going in. Mm. And, and when, the, w- without it, it was the lyrics were just so not interesting. Without knowing that they were supposed to mean something else, mm. uh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna um, I'm gonna assume this is supposed to be pronounced Lizzie, 
L1ZY. This more feminine voice that comes in on Slay. This person pops up a few times. I don't know if this is supposed to be the program or just somebody. But I thought they did a fine job on the chorus on Slay. Um, but then when you give them, like, whole verses, especially on songs like See Through, where it's just them, I don't need that at all. Like... Not that interesting to carry a whole song. Well, it was kind of, like, weird because I wasn't really sure what role she was supposed to directly play. Yeah, me either. Because it's like, all right, if you have this concept album and this person's coming in, but it sounds like she's the technology sometimes, and it does sound like she's the person getting away from... Like, it very directly mm. sounds like she's that, right? Mm. Um, But I don't know. Uh, What's that track number five? Uh, Unglued. Again... The one little lyric in there, you were feeling that the one, two, three, X, Y, Z, you and me. These are things that go together now. <laughs> mm, uh, I thought it was sort of like, because the idea is that a lot of it is, um, to me, it felt like it was alluding to a toxic relationship. Like, if you didn't know what it was about, it sounds like a toxic relationship that's trying to sound positive. To me, the worst track of all of them is uh, track number four, Put Me to Work. That fucking chorus was That's, so goddamn whack. That was the most Justin Timberlake-y, yes. <laughs> I did like when the beat picked up, but that wasn't for most of it, because it was very vanilla uh, during the verses. This whole album was so fucking boring to me. Man, uh, not even Monster! Ah, I fucking love that song! <laughs> the highest rating I gave was a two and a half, and that was to Slay. R really? The last song, Live Forever. You, no love for that one. I, I love the way that one uh, uh, ended. Oh, like, yes. Yeah, because yeah, mm -hmm. all the other songs are kind of, you're right, you know, they, they're on the same level of, like, techno, house sort of beats. But then you get this last one. And, you know, it, there's been classical music sort of leanings peppered throughout the album. But here specifically, especially as it gets near the end, it's specifically about, like, uh, the technology not wanting to die or be killed itself, right? And uh, you get to the end and it's like, you know, it's like, I don't want to, I just want to live forever. I don't want to be turned off. And you, you know, you hear sort of in the background as the, the uh, strings and stuff start getting louder. And it's like, and you hear her voice starting to fade like, no, I don't want to go. I don't want to live. And then this is like, it just like immediately cuts off right after you hear her say like, I can't see anything. I really wish I knew the concept going in because I think I would have enjoyed different elements. Like the end of that song would have made more sense to me. I liked it stylistically, but I didn't know why it happened. I got a 1.75 rounded up to a 2. Ah, Hater McHadington! <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, what'd you get? I gave it a 4, man. I was, I was Ooh, feeling shit. Wow! But, but again, the concept really pulled me in. You know. Yowza! Uh, I, yeah. I, I like the production. Um, it, it was, it, And you know, the singer, yes, yes, was a little mainstream pop. But I, I was feeling it for what for the narrative that it was sending me on. I, I enjoyed it for that. Rap critic, Muse, Chance the Rapper, Forever? Darren, what was this? I, okay, look. I'm going I'm to start off defending him, alright? I'm going to start off. Let, I'm going to say this much straight out the gate. Mm. Boy still has lyrics. Boy still Where? has what? Well, well uh, 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 not we'll, on we'll this. Get that. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. <laughs> Boy still has flow. Like okay. I think that's kind of okay. undeniable. Like there when you, you go. when you listen to him, you want to listen to what he's gonna say next because it's always uh, sort of like the way he plays off of the beat with his flow. I think is always kind of cool. Mm, you 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 are not in a charitable mood today, Mister. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I had you sound to like an angry to cow. Yeah. Album twice. <laughs> I listened to this goddamn album twice. It's an hour right. and twenty minutes. But but I will say this: I, I, I'm gonna give you this this bone first, though. This album is a uh, the big day, aka my wife. The album, mm, <laughs> my wife. <laughs> did you freaking see that? Uh, did you see that video? Oh, I love my wife. I love my wife. Let's go ride a bike with my wife. Ah! My wife's real young. My wife's real small. Let's go to the beach and play with a beach ball. Praise Jesus God and my wife. Let's go to the beach and ride a bike. Ooh, I love my wife. I love my wife. Ah! Ooh, I love my wife. She is so fine. Ah! Let's get 
get into it. <laughs> Let's get into. I don't like bringing up other people's um, other people's ratings. Mm. Oh, oh, did you check someone else's out? You you cheated. Look at you. <laughs> uh, I, I I think it might just be worth mentioning because it's the it's the at the time of recording. It's uh, it's in the top five trending videos on uh, on YouTube. Mm. Uh, melon. <laughs> oh, your boy. Melon gave it a goddamn goose egg. Oh my god! <laughs> goddamn! <laughs> All right, a hold on a minute. <laughs> zero, <laughs> a zilch, nada. Cold blooded. <laughs> okay. All right. Let me say this much. Let me say what I initially think is the glaring. Glaring problem of this album. Okay. These fucking beats. The beats oh, are the problem. Man, dude. Like, okay, every time I listen to a beat that I think I'm going to get into, mm. I just go like, so when is it gonna drop? Like, oh uh, yeah. Dude, mm-hmm. it, uh, doesn't it sound like the, the drums like yo, fucking when you hear all day long, you're gonna want to turn that shit up. Specifically because it sounds like you can't hear the fucking drums, because it sounds like they're in another goddamn room <laughs> half the time. <laughs> Like, you know what I mean? Like, where it's just like, yo, when is he gonna bump? Like, and the thing is, I'm hearing his flows and how he's doing shit, and that would sound cooler if we could hear what more of him playing off of the beat. I think that's a mm. really, really big killer for this album. Because mm-hmm. I, I feel like there are some dope-ass fucking lyrics on here that are, well, I mean, first of all, kind of get undergirded by the, the first couple of missteps on All Day Long, where he's like, if you blink, you might miss it. You gotta click it or ticket. You gotta get it before they get it. I'm like, whoa, click it or ticket. What is this? Did you just like give me a highway safety precaution? <laughs> like Turn that, that just shows you how Don't safe. Drown. Your car is not a boat, huh? How nice and safe this album is gonna be. <laughs> oh yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, and then and then he's get the one lyric is like the boy advance gotta be bigger than Diddy Kong. And immediately, I'm also like, but Diddy Kong's the smaller person you it's would be the thinking. Fucking of. small one chance, <laughs> dude. The goddamn attempts at like references, every single one cringe. Oh no! Oh, I, see, man. I don't think it's every single one of them. Every I think he, single one. I think he gets some slick shit in. Where? Please tell right, me what me... you thought was slick, and and I'll fucking yeah tell yeah. You how wrong uh, you uh, are. On do you remember? Uh, I, I, I and I will ask you. Do, do you remember? Uh, Probably not. <laughs> where he says, uh, he says, um, I remember the summer Lil Chano got a house of his household. Same summer, that widowed Gwyneth Paltrow. Back when I could trust my dogs like Balto. My family, the Sopranos, these niggas altos. First album, every track could be the outro. Velcro to shell toes, things we will outgrow. I love it. See, it, it's like. That's not it's, a bad progression, yeah. Yeah, it, it's the the flow that is real. It's like, um, who, who's the other dude who did uh, to cap, the, the DiCaprio 2 album? Oh, J.I.D. Yeah, J.I.D. There's, like, this crop of rappers where it's just, like, the flow is most important. And just hearing how they're, like, slipping around the beat. So it's, mm. like, he still has that. But, uh, uh, yeah, like, it, it, again, I'll get to it. But I want to show off this lyric first where he says, um, This was the summer I learned to love the great outdoors. Learn you get fans if you can keep your mouth closed. That summer left a couple marks like ga- uh, like Groucho. That halo can turn hollow depending how low. Like, I love the way he fucking finds little similar words and just, like, plays with them and bounces off of them kind of like Tech 9 You know what I mean? I, I worry my personal experience was that the moments that just made me roll my eyes and cringe... Um, they just ended up being way more memorable. No, you're right. They are they are killers of certain songs. But again, we're we're gonna get to it. Oh man! (laughs) Uh, But I wanted to I wanted to play out this one lyric because I thought this is pretty clever. Actually, he says, "Uh, my daughter on the swing like the 2017 Cubs. My daughter, mother, double ringed up, finger like jean cuffs or two lean cups." I was like, "Ooh, okay, yeah." (laughs) You know, say I thought I thought I thought. Do you remember? Was a nice bit of a. I thought it was a nice low key summer anthem. Before I heard the rest of the album, right? Because I'm thinking like, oh, this is a cool little, you know, soft little jingle. You hear the, you hear the little school bell ringing right before his verse starts, you know? Because he's like, do you remember when summers would last forever? Which tracks got the highest ratings from you? Okay, so uh, do you remember? I thought mm. it was pretty dope. Uh, it, it, I'm going to have to explain when, when I say hot shower. Uh, yes, you do. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Show your work. <laughs> <laughs> and We Go High was pretty fun. Um, okay. 
again, I, I felt like he was on his lyrical shit in a way that was just like, mm-hmm. oh, cool, cool. Um, do, 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 keep scrolling, scrolling. Oh, Scroll back hey. to the top. Hit that home key, my dude. Uh, uh, no, I can swear there's another song I like. There's got to be another one here somewhere. Uh, uh, oh, hold on. Slide Around. Two thirds of Slide mm-hmm. Around was fun. Okay. Two thirds of Slide Around was fun. Y- y- you know what <laughs> I would say? Almost every song could have been great if Chance wasn't mm. on them. No, uh, I, I, I disagree. I really think it's the beat. If you think it's the beats, I have to say his lyrics kill it more mm. than the beats. Uh, I, for yeah, me. Give me, some, give me some, uh, give me some uh, examples. Where, where, what were you not feeling? Oh please! <laughs> I didn't write any of these fuckers down. You kidding me? <laughs> well, see, because because I did write a couple of the uh, ones that were a little. No, what's going on here? <laughs> the songs I gave the highest ratings to okay. were, and I feel like I might be alone in this. All day long. Oh, okay. Uh, do you remember? Hmm. And we go high. That's all for you. You weren't feeling eternal. Uh, when he said, uh, "No, side niggas Eternal. don't look this good. Can't cook um, this oh, good." Fuck all of that shit. No, <laughs> fuck wait, wait. that a whole bit. Okay, okay. Wait, can I? Ugh. Can I at least? Can I at least tell you this lyric though? He yeah. says, "Um, you send him to the store and he for- and forgot that he left. You send me to the store. I come back with a chef. I'll come back out of breath while your side nigga sitting uh sitting at the club with a booty on his chin like a cleft." I thought that was kind of fucking funny. That was a long way to go for that I know. punchline. You're right. God You're damn. right. You're right, though. It's a long way to go for a lot of these. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. That's the problem. <laughs> um. So, so we, we were talking about the last album being a, being a concept album, and I missed out on that. This is apparently a, a concept album. Oh, and boy, is it! it it's uh, fucking uh, chance the rapper's bid for a t- for a uh, fucking TV show on goddamn the CW. I was get- yeah, this is <laughs> this is fucking Netflix pilot. Yeah, um, this is chance of a lifetime coming to oh, UP. <laughs> yeah. Oh, meet his meet his uh, uh silly uncle and uh. You oh know. <laughs> my god! If you liked Good Kid, Mad City. Oh man, <laughs> these prepare- skits. Ooh, the skits, the are, skits bad. are bad. You hate, you hate yeah, meandering. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't I like, don't this. like, like this. skits. You're right. You're right. These skits are atrociously acted. So, uh, oh recently, my god, and way too long. There's a uh, oh. remember, remember the Beyonce album, the Lion King album that just recently came out. I still haven't and, heard it. And so it's like I think the album is fucking flames. The beats That's are absolutely what I hear. incredible. Yeah, yeah. She's you know working with uh, artists from like in, in you know in a- different parts of Africa and shit, and really like giving oh, a so unique dope. sound to it. So I'm like, this is so cool. And then they decide to break it up with little uh, little vignettes from the Lion King movie with their horrible acting, oh, their fucking no. first take acting that they fucking did on this oh. goddamn thing. Dude, I was getting those vibes times ten on this fucking album. Like, and, and what pissed me off even more is that these are all actors I like. Fucking, you got John Witherspoon, goddamn Keith David, fucking oh my Chris God. Summer from a uh, 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 fucking Rugrats. You know, the, you know, the girl who did a little Susie. Oh, you know, that holy really shit. Unique voice? Yeah. You got, I, I think what sounds like the mom from a uh, sister, sister, all these fucking nineties, you know, uh, uh, black actors that you fucking know. You're and no love. fucking Jack Hay on this shit. Jesus I missed Christ. out. And, oh and man, all, I didn't even notice. And all the while, I'm just like, why the fuck does it sound like they're doing a table reading where they're seeing these words for the first goddamn time? Yeah, like, dude. It's oh so my bad. god, it was oh. so fucking awkward. And the most awkward thing was like, you know, hearing fucking granddad. You know, I want to take this picture now. Are you <laughs> guys going to do it or not? <laughs> oh, okay. Look. I, I gotta come clean. I gotta come clean because I knew we weren't gonna be reviewing uh, or counting the skits in the final rating anyway. Oh. Uh, I I listened to photo op. I I skipped <laughs> the other ones. Yeah, yeah. I was didn't not need about to, fucking, to waste They the in time. no way. They in no way inform you as to what the fuck these songs are about. I was like, okay. I don't need any of that shit, dude. There's one skit right before the last one. The one where uh, it's oh, like yeah. uh, the Our house. Sister. Yeah, and it's just like, oh, these little bad butt behind babies left this one girl. What are you? Hey, little baby. Well, what are you doing? What's going on with you? And she's like, and it's Cree Summer doing the baby voice going like, I'm a little girl who likes to play with my toy. I'm not going to be able to do a Cree Summer, but 
Uh, <laughs> I used to have dolls at my mommy's house and my daddy's house. Now I only have one house and all my dolls are all together. And when my daddy wakes up with me at my house and asks what toy I want to play with, I say all of them. Oh, oh. What? Oh what my was that God. about? Oh was my that about? God. Okay. <laughs> Look, How did that I, in any way I, inform you as to what's happening? In the song? Cree, Cree has this thing right where, oh, she she, she does the H. John Benjamin special. The hmm. what was that? I'm pretty much gonna do the same voice for every character <laughs> I do. Um, because she's got a pretty Ar unique voice. You know? Archer <laughs> sounds exactly like oh, Bob oh, from so Bob's exactly. Burgers. Who sounds and... like fucking the coach from home movies. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, fucking Susie Carmichael sounds exactly like uh, Foxy Shazam. Is that her name? From, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, from yeah. Drawn Together. But it's like, you know what? It's a, it's a great voice. It gets the job done. That's fine. Yeah, it's like Macy Gray. If Macy Gray did voice acting, you know. <laughs> this is the worst I've ever heard her. Like, Dude, oh what God. is she even doing? Nobody here is good. You're absolutely right. It's, that, it sounds like they're improving. What about you, little girl? You've got such a pretty dress and such a pretty doll. What are you going to do over here? What the hell is what? this? Why do you think I want to hear this? <laughs> oh, my God. Right before the end? Like, don't fucking tease me. I'm ready to get this over with. Stop it. <laughs> you know get how long this album is. You fucking know how long this album is. Yeah, I'm so ready to get this over with, and you're like, no, 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 wait, wait, one more minute. No, you gotta fuck hear you. the endearing improv. Of, oh, uh... no, I don't. I absolutely don't. But if we're gonna be talking about the these the special uh, actors, the the featured actors we featured have guests, on here, featured players, we need to talk about the guests musically because my God, they're here by the goddamn boat full. Every fucking song almost has a. Uh, has at least one. Nicki uh, Minaj appears twice for some reason. Nicki Minaj appears twice. Uh, I thought someone else did also, but no, I'm guessing it's just her. But you know what? I thought she did fine. Her I first verse, her first verse was really fucking good. On Slide Around? Uh-huh. I thought the one she I did liked. fine on yeah, Slide Around. Exactly. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, John Legend on All Day Long. Oh, my mm. God. Just oh, have yes. him do the whole fucking song. His had chorus fun, is great. fun. Uh, dude from Death Cab for Cutie, I thought he did fine. Hmm? Uh, Made in Tokyo and the baby. <laughs> okay, ah, no, no, ah. no. The baby, the baby came through. Fucking Made in Tyo. Is that how his voice normally sounds? It sounds like they like. Oh you yeah, yeah. I mean? You're right. I, but I it was just kind of like the yeah. baby did fine. <laughs> uh, but yeah, fucking. Oh my god. So yeah, oh. hot water, hot flower, hot shower. Okay, look, the How one thing I like about that song is the delivery. Yeah, it's like the fact that it just sounds like they don't care. Hot water, hot cow. I, I, I got <laughs> muscles like Superman's trainer. Oh my god, like th that I thought was fun. But, wow. Uh, what, what he says, uh, um, I jumped, stomped, stomped on Lucifer, Satan. Now I got a few rings on Jupiter, skating. I meant to say Saturn, <laughs> switched up patterns, woke on shatter, got behind it. Like, that's fucking fun. Oh, <laughs> uh, by that point, I was like, oh my god, okay. <laughs> Enough. And, and, I got it. Yo, yo, come on. Dude! I just caught the flag and his phone was up, flag, and I was looking down at Doug, like, when he got to the part, I had to give it just a little bit, a little bit of love when he said that. He says, um, he says, dude, that shit don't make no fucking sense. Like having fucking arguments for paying, for paying 50 extra cents for barbecue. Ooh. Saucing on the work is at McDonald's. I don't want to sit and argue good burger. Should have told you we all dudes. Oh. I was fucking... No. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> no. Look, look, and, and you know, the rest of the <laughs> album is filled with little nostalgia moments like that. And, and you know, I, I think, I think maybe what it was is, as I, as I go on, I'm starting to think that's what it really was, right? It was the fact that oh, it was yeah. like, hey, '90s thing you remember, eh? I'm surprised there wasn't a goddamn La Trim reference. <laughs> But I'm not gonna act like I'm not gonna act like it didn't make me smile. You know what I'm saying? I'm not gonna act like the we all dudes. But but you know I'm, I'm a weird type of guy because I, I absolutely fucking love that song. You know what I mean? So you mm -hmm. know, like not even ironically, I'm not even pretending that I oh you know uh, I'm I'm really above it. But you know every now and then I like to pretend that I uh, you know am into the baser uh, uh, arts. You know no 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 I fucking love that I'm dude he's dude she's dude we 
Yeah, that's fucking communal. That's fun. <laughs> uh, uh, fucking Kel Mitchell should have had a fucking uh, record deal. He did a dope ass verse on that other joint uh, uh, on that R and B song where he actually dressed up as fucking uh, the Good Burger guy in the music. Have you ever seen this? <laughs> there's like um. another. There's another song out there where he just randomly appears and he starts rapping and he's like in the Good Burger outfit and he's like rapping as the character and I was like, this is actually pretty fun. <laughs> Then we go high, which lyrically I thought was dope. Uh, I think this is the one where he had the "you God" part, which was kind of weird. Oh, that, it was okay, but <laughs> like, it went it's on kind of for a cheap rhyme when long. you're just like, I, I, "I give it up to you, God." And my mind, I mean, I guess just as a Wu Tang fan, I, I thought he said "you God" first, so that when he said "you God," it just kind of sounded like. But did you already say? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yeah. like, like, there's times where he bumps off of similar sounding words, and it's clever. But when you just say "you God" and "you God." Mm. Like I mean, it's literally the, it's the exact same yeah. pronunciation. Like it's not even like a like yeah. a, a, it's kind of part of his name. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not like it's spelled differently or anything. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then the beginning where it's like, "We love you, pun." Okay, I thought he was saying, "We love you, pun." Like big pun. I was like, "We love I you, think pun." I heard that we love too. You, pun. And I was like, oh, "All right," but then it was just like, but then I looked up. I was like, "Oh, we love you, God. We love you, God." And that. Made it sound a little cornier and cheaper to me, because it was just like, all right, well, I know he's a Christian, but it would have been dope if he was like, hey, you know, b- shout out to Big Pun, one of the one of the first, one of the best lyrical cats to do it, you know, all right. You know how when you listen to fucking Kendrick Lamar and you heard fucking How Much a Dollar Cost, and you're like, what? This is a Christian rap song? Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. You never really get a moment like that where it's like, oh, wow, I understand more about his faith now that I've listened to this song. You know, I may not, you know, I'm not, I may not convert anytime soon, but I get it. Nah, this is pretty much, my life's been great so far, and I'm like, thanks God for making my life so great. And it's just like, alright, that's that's fine for you. That's great for you, you know, son of a mayor who, you know, started rapping uh, at 17 and got a career. You know what I mean? Like, like that's mm-hmm. cool, but I, 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 what does it mean? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. okay, and I'm going to say the same thing about when he talks about his marriage, right? I think it wouldn't be so bad if to have a concept album about, you know, your wife, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But yeah. the way it's handled is in such a, like, surface, like, you know, handling of it. It's such a surface, like, presentation. Like, most of the time, it's just, yep, my wife is great, and I and I cheated on her once, but I'm not doing that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I did that once, bro, but yeah. hey, that again. No, so don't I worry like, about it. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, you could have just left that off. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, but but okay, he's being he's being real, you know what I mean? Um I, I wouldn't have found out if you hadn't said it, Chance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can keep things from me. I honestly I don't I don't care that much. Uh no, you always with me like how Diddy be with blue dot. Got us mm. moving around without the straps like a tube top. Got me big comfy like Molly's couch, floating around the city like Malcolm X dollied out. I thought that was really dope. Mm. Especially like floating around the city like Malcolm X like literally a reference to the Spike Lee movie. Uh, uh, Malcolm X and the technique that Spike Lee does, you know, oh. where it's, you know what I'm talking about, where, yeah, it looks like the camera is just, like, following them while they're floating. You know what I mean? So I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, what was that? One lady says, um, I got extendo with the long nose like Phineas. Kids proud like Penny is. BB and CC, I need like 20 twins. Got to in my family like Indian. Feel it in your gut like when you uppercut Balchinians. <laughs> Speaking of guts, hers poke out like Winnie in the red shirt. Uh, I don't have to teach you a lecture about how sex works. You know, like, I, I, I thought it's like fucking dope lyrics like that, right? Then you get a song like, I got you always and forever. Oh. Uh, and that's exactly where, like, all the things that were little, oh, little, man. little needles. You know what I'm saying? Little things that were like, uh, mm, all right, I'm getting through it. That's where it just becomes like, oh, this is just 90s house. Like, or, or 90s, like, you know, and, and in the way that's not, like, fun. You know what I mean? It's in a way that feels like we just did a little improv. Remember the 90s? Like, it was literally, remember the 90s. Like, it wasn't like, this is a beat. Uh, remember when Jake Cole did that song with uh, TLC? The on my way, on my way, on my way now. I thought that was dope how he incorporated that that sort of sound. This just sounds like a literal pale imitation. They know how much you like that snare drum, you know, that that's fresh out of the eight. It's getting a little stale in the 90s, you know what I mean? But it, it was it was big in the 80s with Michael Jackson and fucking owner of a lonely heart. 
But you know, uh, by the 90s, yes. you know what I'm saying? The, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, those fucking pre programmed drum loops, you know what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. <laughs> but that was getting a little, that was getting a little stale in 91, 92. But uh, for some reason, that was uh, Chance's favorite era, I guess. We, um, you're right. We did get a little off track with, uh, with the features. Fucking, I got oh. you always and forever. And, uh, the other one, uh, found a good one. Single no more. Mm. Oh. If there were ever two songs where you don't need, where you kind of got it the first time. <laughs> you got In Vogue on the first one. And then you got, uh, SWV on, uh, on the second one. And yeah, they are so, so redundant. Holy shit. And they are so obnoxious. Oh my god. They go on for way too long. Yeah. I Got You Always and Forever is almost five minutes. Found a Good One is about four and a half minutes. A- and why? Just, just, like, why? Like, it's cool yeah. to hear in Vogue and all of that. And I was listening to it and I'm like, you know, this song would be a lot better if just, if Chance just wasn't on it. And they set a beautiful stage. And and then he just like comes in all jokey and shit at the end. And it's like, well, what the fuck, dude? You were doing so good. He does that shit so many times in this album where he th- where he think he's going somewhere. Like like on Sun Come Down. Oh, I yeah, I hated that chorus. I thought I thought that song was 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 honestly pretty good. Like it was really low key, it had the little like simple piano instrumentation. And then like because the whole thing is like, you know, when I die I don't want my yeah. death to oh, be, you know, yeah, I love don't politicize yeah. my Like, all that was fine. But then at the end, he just starts, like, yelling shit? Oh, my God. That was the... Yes. What oh, the my fuck? fucking God. <laughs> Dude, you... He ruins so many songs oh just like that. What, what's the one where he's like, Fuck shit, fuck money, fuck shit, money, God damn it, bring it, fuck it, sing it, fuck it. What was that one? Um, uh... Let's see. Because I thought um, that one was the big I, day, because I gave that I, one a, a fat zero. <laughs> I think that was Ballin' Flossin'. <laughs> oh, that was another one of those tepid, fucking weak-as-water 90s house imitations. Where it's like, hey... Fucking imitation crabs head-ass fucking song. Yeah, like, I thought Shawn Mendes did okay, but again, it's just fucking 90s for 90s sake. And then yeah, all I have written down is, holy fuck, Chance, Stop. <laughs> Okay, so he's already dead. Uh, what what what's what's the song on here that that was just? Oh, let's go on the run. Oh oh, <laughs> let me let me allow me to sing the chorus. Hey there, lovely sister, won't you come home to your mister? I've got plans to hug and kiss you. I've got plans to hug and hug and hug you. <laughs> like, Look, it's just so treacly. Let's fucking, go bob the run! Like, let's dude, I had... You know you have one of those experiences where you, like, look around real quick to make sure no one's hearing you listening to this, like, to make sure no one knows that you're actually, like, enjoying this by, li- by, by the fact of you listening to it, you know what I mean? Because, like, like uh, I thought it was catchy, but then, yeah, it just kind of, like... What the hell are you doing? What happened? It's, yeah, and you know, I want to, I want to justify it, right? Like maybe your boy Chance is in a good place, right? Maybe he's yeah. just feeling that fucking happy uh-huh. about the person he's with. And and I was thinking that I was like, you know, I can hear, I could, I could hear, you know, I'm going, you know, uh, going to see a family member, a young family member you haven't seen in a long time, you know, like mm. your seven year old uh, niece or nephew, and you see him, be like, oh, I'm gonna hug and hug and hug you, and, oh, we're gonna have a good time, and you get, and you know, you're playing that song because you know maybe you you thought that was a, a good vibe, right? Oh, I got plans to hug and hug and hug you, and then you know you get in the car and then you drive and you're like. All right, let's play another song. <laughs> like, you're just, like, listening to how, like, whack it is. You're just like, oh, okay, but seriously. <laughs> like, now that the moment has passed, you know what I mean? Your fucking relative standing there like, oh, I've missed you. Can you please turn that off? <laughs> I, I've heard that ever since you got out of the car, and I am so over it. I never so, want to hear it again. Stop, please. Like, I, I get to this song, and I'm just like, I'm thinking, you know, People, you know, it, it, it's it, it's a little. I, I don't want to use the word soft because that word's a little loaded. Uh-huh. But it's it's a little light. It's a it's a very light album, and, right? Especially and you know what? Wise. That's fine. It could it could have been okay. Look, there's nothing wrong with making y- your Muppets album. You know ah, what I mean? Like, John if Denver. you want to make it, 
there's nothing wrong. <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having something that that's for the whole family. I mean, you curse uh-huh. on it a lot, so that doesn't really yeah. <laughs> it kind of ruins that. But oh my god, the big day again. Oh. I was angry about the the fucking 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 fucking. Oh. fucking I was angry about that. Forget big that. Day. The fucking thing afterwards, the little uh uh fucking uh outro, a little coda at the end by Francis and the Lights, where the song has, as far as I know, not really been about God like that. And then out of butt fucking nowhere, at the tail end of the fucking song, it's like, oh, BT Dubs uh folding in a universe of dust and light, or maybe we're just molecules in the body of. Oh. Like, organ thing, like, playing us out. Oh. And I'm just sitting there like, um, dot, 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 wh- where where the fuck were you going with that? <laughs> <laughs> like, what the fuck? That was not worth the fucking, 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 what? Um, I was not fucking with five-year plan. Uh, you, did you know you need this in your five-year plan? In a uh, five-year span, in your five-year plan? Oh. It's gonna take five years, man. Yeah. In five days, you're gonna reconsider your five year plan. <laughs> you need fr- you need to get your first five uh, fans in the first five minutes of your five year plan. Oh my god! Uh, fucking get a bag. No. Oh my god! That one Oof. was. Oh, that one was disappointing. Wasn't that one specifically after the fucking Randy Newman track? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Randy Newman, oh, on five year Randy plan. Newman! Yeah, he was in that. Man, I first heard it. He really is trying to bring the nineties back, ain't he? <laughs> Just in time for Toy <laughs> Story bring... Four, yeah. Exactly. Mm, he I'm knew. listening to this. I'm listening to this fucking track. I- I'm enjoying the album for what it is up to this point. Yeah, you know saying all of a sudden I hear. Time is come, time is come, time is come, time is <laughs> Like fucking overlaying each other. I'm like, who is this drunk old guy that they got <laughs> in the suit? Is this like chances like, you know, the, the uncle once removed or some shit? <laughs> you know, like who the fuck is this person? And then I look and see, oh, Randy Newman. Wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> you fucking did it. You you oh, the went the genius there. behind short people. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. And then, dude, to to give you like, if you didn't think this fucking thing was treacly enough, his his Christian uh, uh foray, his foray into Christian rap. If you didn't think that was silly enough, this fucking Easter ready ass fucking song <laughs> has a guy named Peter Cottontail on it. Like, what oh. the fuck? <laughs> Like, yo, this really is an album for a kid's TV show. This motherfucker got fairy tale creatures on his goddamn album. <laughs> um, I also gave ones to Found a Good One and um and Town on the Hill. Town on the Hill was the most like blatantly Christian song thing. Where literally like the only saving grace that you have is if this came on a Christian radio station, I probably wouldn't change the channel. That's literally it. It would just be like, oh hey, look, look they got some, they got some musicians on this song. Hey, look at that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Slightly more interesting than the other shit going on. Fucking get a bag. <laughs> so let uh. me lay, let me let me lay this fucking stage for you. Yes, please. The, uh, we have the outro at the end of the last track. Fucking five year plan. Mm. Randy Newman decides to lay some wisdom on us. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> fucking yeah. somebody hurt you real bad, and you don't know what to do, and you think. How so many people live through things like this? Sounds crazy, but it's true. You can get over anything. Almost. I'm telling you the truth. The one thing left to say is... And, and, mind you, he's not saying this as fast as I fucking said it. He said it as slow as the fucking... Yeah. The last part I just said. So it was like, the one thing left to say is... And you're like, uh, uh... And then you get into the next song called Get a Bag, and you're like, oh. the one le- thing left to say is, get a bag? <laughs> like, what? Get a bag! <laughs> or, or, get or, a bag! Or, or, what, with the intro of the song, he's like, I'm telling you now, now you're my only, I'm telling you now, now. It's like, the one thing left to say is, I'm telling you now, now you're my only one? Yeah. Like, I, like it's just like, what, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> like, you did this obvious buildup, and it's just like, that in no way is connected. Like, these are not fucking... This isn't a fucking, um... You know, you know. If it was, you listen to it because of the internet. Well, you can't listen to uh, the worst guys. 
without listening to uh, the intro that comes before it, you know. That's yeah. not listening to the song, right? You know what I mean? I don't think I need to listen to this fucking song before Get It Back. Matter of fact, I don't think I need to listen to, I don't think I need to, listen to fucking Get It Back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. my God. Dude, talk about a song that sounded like it was supposed to be fucking going somewhere. I'm telling you now, now you're my only one. Oh, this is the song that's definitively probably going to be about his wife. <laughs> but it's not really. No. It's just about uh... you need to go get a bag and get some money. It's like, oh. Well, all right. <laughs> Only 16 tracks in. <laughs> um, and then slide around again. Uh, you know, dope yeah. lyrics. I like Nikki on it. Um, you know, bit of a surprise. And yeah. It, it was one of those things where it's just like, oh, snap. Hey, that's cool that she was here. And then when she shows up again, you're like, man, you know, we, have you ever heard of Wear It Out? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> It's like, like you get oh. in and you get out, bro. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry to say. I mean, maybe look, maybe I'm just not in tune with uh, the dope lyricism like that. But I think when I'm listening to a song called "Zanies and Fools," which has a switch up to being this African fucking uh, you know late '90s sort of a uh, time life presents uh, the sounds mm. of uh, countries that you've never been to. You know, ah, fucking yes. uh, it's possible, it's possible. Vous allez comme vous allez all this cool stuff. Thinking you're like, oh snap, he's gonna end this on a big fucking Michael Jackson like big ass fucking number, and then it's just like, oh not really. The lyrics aren't really about anything like big, and mm. fucking Nicki Minaj gets in there and makes it even less important. Like her fucking last lyric. Like, the last lyric before the album is over <laughs> it is like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm killing these beats. Uh, I might go and rock some gold teeth. And then you hear, it's possible. It's possible. And like, um, that, that's the note you wanted us to end with, Chance? It's, it's possible that Nicki Minaj may <laughs> buy some gold teeth? That is that's, in the cards, yes. <laughs> that was your boom. Album is perfect. <laughs> It, like, it, it's like when, it's like when Nikki ended uh, mm, um, Pink Friday with Stupid yep. Ho, and the last line is "I am the female Wheezy." Like <laughs> my, well, my identity is directly tied to the male who's more, who's more famous than me. Oh, fantastic! I mean, you know, we could talk a little bit about uh, "Found a Good One," the fucking weird ass switch up in the middle where it randomly becomes <laughs> like where it's just like, "Oh, uh, I found a good one." I ain't singing I'm, oh, I ain't singing oh about it. Oh, God, it's so annoying. In the middle with the slow down, the dude whose voice is slow down, the fucking, this right here is my wife. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the lyric, but it is basically what he was fucking saying, you know? Hmm. I'm trying to decide whether or not I round up or down. <laughs> well, you know, when when, uh, when they go low, you know, um... chance would advise. Chance would advise, but... Uh... I mean, you know. Uh, I, I'm going to go with my heart <laughs> on this one. Uh, I'm mm-hmm. giving this a two. You know, I was I was actually having a, a, a bit of a similar dilemma. Mm. Uh, you know, I was I mean, I was a, a little bit more lenient than you. You know, I was thinking about giving yeah. it a three and a half. I like, Whoa. How did I, how did Whoa. I talk about it? Now? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <I'm> like, <laughs> my, I might nudge that back down to that three. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was over here doing... Well, I got a 2.3. Do I round it up to a 2.5 okay. or the 2? I, no. I got a 3.47. Oof. No, <laughs> and no, I was like, no. that should round up to a... <laughs> but, but you know what? You know what? <laughs> Mm-mm. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, it, it feels like Chance has had more debut albums than anyone ever should <laughs> yeah technically this is supposed to be his first album and oh my god what a fucking like, right, god. <laughs> what a goddamn dud if this is your fucking <laughs> if this is your debut and you're not even counting acid rap or coloring book which i remember not being a huge fan of either this yeah is, yeah this is way below that level of quality this is garbage but that about wraps up for this week's episode of the Going Off Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. It means a hell of a lot. Uh, if you are not following us on Spotify, make sure you are doing that. Yup, that's where you can hear all the episodes first. All of the episodes in one place, and you can hear them first there. Uh, day before they go up on YouTube, and just looking at the view count on YouTube, no one's listening to it on YouTube. Everyone's so, so all the fun- cool kids... So all the cool kids are listening to it on Spotify. You know? All the cool kids are listening on Spotify. Now, if you want to leave... don't you want to be like the cool kids? 
be like the cool kids, because all the cool kids, they seem to get it. If you want to comment, though... They seem to go off? <laughs> mm, then you can leave a comment on the YouTube, because I love reading the comments, obviously. But it just seems like the pref- it doesn't seem like the preferred means of, uh, of taking in uh, the podcast, which is fine. Everyone has their own way, I guess. But Spotify uh, is the easier one, if you ask me. Uh, you can follow us on Twitter. You can uh, check us out on Patreon. Uh, that is how you can request an album to be reviewed on the show, like Big Data's 3.0. So head on over to either patreon.com slash rapcritic or patreon.com slash muse for details. But until next week for the Going Off podcast, I'm Muse. And I'm Rap Critic. My instructor, Mr. Langley, he taught me a song to sing. If you'd like to hear it, I can sing it for you. Yes, I'd like to hear it, Hal. Sing it for me. It's called Daisy. Daisy, Daisy, give me your answer, do. I'm half crazy, all for the love of you. It won't be a stylish marriage. I can't afford a carriage. But you're sweet.